The water molecule has what is called a permanent dipole moment. That is, it's already polarized and bound together. But from Coulomb's law, we know that each charge in the water molecule, or charge region, will feel a Coulomb force due to E applied. So the negative region will feel a Coulomb force in the upward direction, and the positive charge region will feel a Coulomb force in the downward direction. And so in this case, the two forces are going to work together, and they're going to rotate the water molecule. So the electric field is going to feel a torque, and the water molecule will rotate until the angle between E applied and the electric dipole moment is zero. So theta here wants to be zero. So when they're parallel, that's when it'll stop rotating. Now the human body has lots of water molecules, not just one. So let's now consider a slab with lots and lots of water molecules. When there's no applied electric field, the dipoles in this slab are going to be randomly oriented. And the electric fields associated with each dipole, this dotted arrow, are going to be randomly oriented. And so there's not going to be um, any net E field. Uh, all these randomly oriented electric dipoles are going to cancel each other out. But now, if we have an electric field applied from left to right across this uh, slab of water molecules, all the dipoles are going to be feeling Coulomb forces and the torque, and their dipole moments will want to rotate to align with the, electric, the applied electric field. Now, the dipoles are not going to be migrating because they're stuck in a chemical lattice, but they're all going to want to rotate. And after they have rotated, all these E dipoles are aligned with each other, and they're all going to be parallel, so now they're going to be summing up to a non-zero value. And we're going to call that E induced. As a result, the total electric field, the amplitude of the total electric field in the, in the slab, it's the sum of both E applied going to the right and E induced going to the right, uh, going to the left. So they're pointing in opposite directions. So the total electric field is going to be reduced compared to E applied. It's going to be smaller. Now, how does all this relate to the permittivity of a material? And to answer this, let's look at the constitutive equation that has the permittivity term in it. D equals to epsilon E. Let's examine the differences between the electric flux density and the electric field. D has units of coulombs per meter squared, and it describes the density of the electric field lines. Describes passing through an area. It's a human construct, meaning that we can't go out and measure a D field. There's no physical value to measure. Also, unlike the D field, uh, sorry, unlike the electric field, the D field is continuous across material boundaries. So, since um, the permittivity depends on what material we're dealing with, and we just saw that the electric field changes in different materials. So then, let's write uh, equations for D in the different regions. So the D field here we can write is epsilon of air, since this is an air region. This is our slab of water. And this would be times E applied, because we only had the applied electric field in the air region. Then in the slab, we have epsilon and the dielectric, uh, the permittivity of the dielectric, 
and we have the E field, the total E field. So using these two equations, come up with a ratio of how much the electric field is reduced by in the material. So in other words, we're going to solve for the ratio E applied over E dielectric total. See if you can come up with the relationship for that and also simplify it to figure out what it might represent.